by uh, thanking Max for creating, producing, and directing Daniel Blackjack Ball, and to his loving wife and the committee for all they've done to make it happen. And of course to the Verona Casino for subsidizing the event. This is the 21st Blackjack Ball, a uh, special one for all of us. When I sat down for the first time at a blackjack table back in 1958, I could never have envisioned that almost 60 years later, I'd be standing here in this room with all of you tonight. I didn't know anything about blackjack or casinos or gambling or much of the mathematics of probability and gambling. I was a new PhD in mathematics and I was there on a cheap vacation to case roulette wheels because I've been thinking about the physics of roulette wheels and I was convinced that I could develop a machine that would predict where the ball would fall. Not exactly, but fairly accurately. And uh, that, that was an exciting idea to me because mathematicians had studied gambling games for hundreds of years. They had developed probability theory in the course of all this. And they'd proven that most of the gambling systems that people tried could never work. They couldn't do uh, anything to change the edge. So I thought this would be great news if I could develop a scheme for doing just that. Well, I thought I could build a wearable computer and um, it would do the work for me. And the reason I was playing blackjack was simply to get a little experience betting in a casino because I knew nothing about them. I'd never played, never handled money, didn't know anything about the atmosphere. And just before I left, somebody in the math department at UCLA told me about an article in a statistics journal. And that article supposedly would let you play with only a minus 0.62% disadvantage. So I said, well, this is a cheap way to get some experience. And that's how I happened to be at the blackjack tables way back. Well, after about 40 minutes, I got the idea for card counting. And I went back to UCLA and started thinking about it and seeing how I would work it out. And uh, then when I moved from UCLA to MIT, I used math and MIT's IBM 704 computer. That was a day when uh, good computers were first coming online. And I didn't know anything about them, so I taught myself something called Fortran and learned how to program it. Well, I worked all this out, and then I announced it at a meeting of the American Math Society. They rejected my abstract initially because they didn't think it was true. Uh, but somebody who was on the committee knew me and said that it probably was true, so they <laughs> let me give my talk. Well, after that, after that happened, there was a lot of publicity, and I was scorned by not only the Washington Post, which had a satirical editorial uh, saying how ridiculous all this was, but by casinos who said they sent cabs for people like me. And I know they also would have said they would send cabs for people like you too, but I don't think any of you ever had a cab sent to pick you up. <laughs> well, maybe some of the smart comp people have uh, worked that out. Well. When I went out to the casinos to try it, it worked the way I said it was uh, going to work, and I wrote it up in a book called Beat the Dealer. That became a New York Times bestseller, and I uh, sold more than a million copies in print. And to me, the most satisfying payoff wasn't the money or the publicity. It was the fact that uh, I affected a very large number of lives unintentionally uh, by writing that book and publishing it. I realized that I dropped a pebble in the water. <laughs> I dropped a little pebble in the water, and these tidal waves came out. Expanding into the future. Well, it's astounding and gratifying and humbling to me to think that ultimately mathematical curiosity is what led me to stand here in this room among all of you today you who are part of that tidal wave, and uh, so many of the top advantage players in the world. Some of you have lived well 
for years or even decades using your casino skills. Others have used the blackjack winnings to go on to become centi-millionaires or even billionaires, some of whom are in this room. Each of you has an amazing story to tell. I've heard several new ones tonight that I've enjoyed immensely. I haven't heard them all, but uh, if I come here often enough, I hope I will. There is one story that you may not have heard that's in my, my new book, which is kind of a memoir and a story of uh, my adventures, in, uh, both in the casinos and more, more so on Wall Street. Um, it's about a college senior who, who read Beat the Dealer back in 1966 while recovering from a truly horrible automobile accident. And he took $200 to Las Vegas after having read the book and believed he could turn it into $10,000. His mother told him not to go. This was a terrible mistake. And he worked hard 16 hours a day trying to both support himself in Las Vegas and expand his bankroll. And he finally ran it up to $10,000. And then he went off to the Navy for two years, and he came back, and he went on to use what he learned in the casinos, which, by the way, is a wonderful classroom for learning investing, better than uh, almost anything you can do on Wall Street. He, went, he, he started uh, uh, for a company in Newport Beach, as it happens, and he helped found a, a big investment firm. He eventually became the manager of a quarter of a trillion dollars, and his whole team, of he, of which he was the co-manager and strategist, was uh, managing two trillion dollars at one point. So from two hundred dollars to two trillion dollars over uh, forty years or so. So this is this is one story in the book. There are quite a number of others, and I hope that you enjoy reading my book and. I hope that you enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed hearing your stories. And I want to say you're a truly fantastic group of people, and I enjoy seeing you every time I come. Thank you very much.